So what we're looking at here is Groupon. This was our first trade in the boot camp. It's actually a picture perfect example of the money flow. I mean, literally picture perfect so far. <clears throat> where there is no faith, there is no patience. And where there is no discipline, there can't be any intelligent action. Only through time can you attain any of these pivotal character traits. Faith is a character trait. One of the qualities of faith is patience. Trading requires a lot of patience. Requires faith too, man. That's why I always tell people, if you want to be a good trader, read the book, The Science of Getting Rich. It has nothing to do with trading, but everything to do with mindset. An expectation of winning. And if you have an expectation of winning, and you have a strategy that wins, then you can settle the faith part and just have faith in it, and then you don't have to second guess it, and you can just trust it, and then you can just set your targets and expect to win. And it makes life real simple. Allows me to focus on other things. See, I expect this to go up. I have no doubt. So we hit our second target today. We hit our first target right here. I'm actually shocked when trades don't work. So I'm usually trying to give them the benefit of the doubt because I wouldn't have taken it if I didn't think it was going to work. Um, I fully expect them to go up. Like I expect every trade to go up at least 50% or I don't take it. That's why I can't take small sums. I'm not trying to day trade. I'm not picking up pennies, man. I want to pick up dollars, like $100 bills, not pennies. So I don't care about a $2 move here or there. I want to make a $100 move if possible. So that's not day trading. Day trading is about picking up pennies. Now, the way you make that work is you take large positions, you know, $50,000 trades, and then you can pick up some money. But I don't, you know, I can't sit and watch it like that. So I got other things to do. So we hit our first target in here. We downsized the trade. Today we're hitting our second target. Now this is picture perfect how the money flow should go. So we hit it. We another target was right there. So first one on this box over here, which was became our target, right? How f if and there's no hard and fast rule on this, but when you have your breakout out of a stage one, which is what this was, right? And everything crosses, everything crosses. All six indicators of the money flow trading system went on a buy. That's why we initiated it. This little day here that pulled back is no big deal. It didn't hit our stop, so it doesn't matter. I haven't moved stops. I'm not trailing this with a stop. Some people say, well, why, why aren't you trading this with a stop? It ain't coming back. If I thought it was coming back, I wouldn't have bought it. Now, it could. It could, but it's not my only trade. So I don't need to follow it all the way up in some fear-based strategy of keeping your gains. And It's all out of fear, man. It's a fear-based strategy. I'm not saying it's not an appropriate strategy for some people in the style that they're trading. For some styles, that's appropriate. For the money flow, it's not appropriate. <clears throat> so if you're tr if you're trailing stops, you're not trading the money flow. That's not how it works. The, instead of doing that, we downsize the trade as we're correct. And so we assume it's probably going to come up into here and stop. But today's already a 73. Wherever the top today is, I'll start drawing a line, assuming that's the top, like it happened over here. But over here, it wasn't. It kept going a little bit more. So pretty big move today. By the time this thing finally stops and turns, we will have less and less shares, less and less shares. We don't need to scale up a, a stop, okay? That's a different way of trading, a different style. Um, so this one was, I mean, look, look at this. It's been picture perfect right out of the textbook. So that was Groupon. Let's look at some of these others. ABV is pushing up again today. Very much surprised me at breaking out of the box. I wouldn't get overly – I'd be. I'm going to be very surprised if this holds. You see where it stopped, right? Stage three, right on the RSI, which also happened to be a previous high, which also happens to be 
true value. Um, I've seen some analysts have now started raising targets on this stock to, I think, 110, 115. I think it's 110. <clears throat> um, I'm down a half position. There was our breakout day. There was our first target. Second target was the RSI, and now we're down. And that appears to be a brand new breakout. Would I add to this as a stage one breakout? Someone asked me that. No. And you said, why not? Uh, RSI is too high for me. It's got to pull back. Would I sell it? No. No, I'm not selling it because it is a breakout. This is a stage two breakout. It's breaking out of the box. Um, out of what was possibly a stage three, or it's just a continuation here. I mean, that's the way I would look at it because the RSI is too high. I can't buy when the RSI is that high, okay? I'm not selling. I'm just going to let it ride. So I would do nothing. Makes that decision real simple, okay? Real simple. So, whew, these are on fire, man. What happened here? I got us off track. Why didn't it go back? All right, hold on. Go to view all. I love stock charts. So let's see. ABV. So Beyond Meat's on the move. Um, could have added. I sent a text out today. This is one the Money Flow Trading Society's been buying. And this one we're buying also in the boot camp. Still a buy. Um, I was really hoping for a little more consolidation. We may not get it. It's still not a stage two. It hasn't broke above the 20. Um, I'm not in a big rush to add to it. Uh, appreciate that, Nicholas. I'm not in a, you know, we're still in this zone. I think we still have time. Um, you know, we started buying right here. Now we're moving up. Could still buy. Everything's rolling over. The trade's on 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 track for what it should be doing. Everything's, you know, our size about the crop. We're right at the twenty. Everything's, you know, everything's going up. So it's going to take a minute for the ADX. A ADX isn't going to kick in until we cross the twenty. So um, got plenty of time to add to this trade. Patience. That's what I said in the beginning, right? Patience. Where there's no faith, there's no patience. Where there is no discipline, there can't be any intelligent actions. Only through time can you attain any of these pivotal character traits. Um, so we're patient. We're going to let this one build out. So let's back up. That was Beyond Meat. Let's look at Let's keep going here. Whenever you do the uh, rolling thing for your, if you have them in a folder and stock charts, it, it realigns them to the center. It's kind of weird. Uh, tacos one I've been building. Started to get the breakout today. It's kind of, kind of gave back that little breakout. It's still stuck in that box. It's a stage two, but it's stuck in a box here. $9.50 target. Uh, DraftKings is fine. Normal market movement here. Normal market movement. I could share my folder, but then I'd be stealing from you, building those folders. Now, if you're inside the Money Flow Trading Society, obviously I'll share them with you. Let's see. ERX. Continues to climb higher. Uh, keep an eye on the RSI. That'll be our next selling point. Remember, this is a double leveraged fund. We don't want to stay our welcome in these. When this thing goes to turn, I want to be good and out. So I'm going to sell one more time on the RSI. And then I'll never sell again until the MACD and them start to roll over. Okay? I don't care how high. If it just keeps going and going and going, that's fine. I'm going to look to sell again when the MACD rolls over, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
you know, I wouldn't worry about position sizes. A lot of people, oh, I wish I'd have bought more. Um, you, you should buy, when you initiate a trade, you should buy what your position size is. You don't base, never base your trades on winning. You base your trades on how much you can lose. So winning is just whatever God in the universe gives you. So this goes up and you're like, oh man, I could have bought a lot more. No, you should buy your fucking position size. That's what you should do. And then you should congratulate yourself for a winning trade. Trading is the only place in the world where people will win and still be mad at themselves. You'll do good and be like, oh man, I could have blah, 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 blah. Trading is the only place in the world where people do that. Nobody wins the Super Bowl and goes, man, I could have threw two more touchdowns. They don't do that. Only in trading do people get mad at themselves for winning trades. Uh, Lyft, what's my plan on solo? You should know. What, what would you do? Sell it? It's going up, bro. Let it go. Uh, what do you do when a stock goes up? You let it go up. There's, there's nothing to do. You let it go up, man. That's been one of the hardest things for me to teach people. It's There's this human thing. People want to take the profits and then put it in something else. And it's like, yeah, but you want to put it in something else that's doing what? That's going to go up. So you're going to take from something going up to put it in something that may or may not go up. Like, So the way you alleviate that, the way you alleviate that is – Setting targets. Once your targets are hit, you let it run. You let it run. Why? Do you know how many people got out on this on the first day because it popped 30% when I put this trade out? You know why? Because it went up 30% in a single day and they're not used to winning in stocks. So they sold it. And of course, I reprimanded them because I didn't text you. I don't know why the fuck you're selling it. But they're used to not winning. So they started selling it. Well, it comes down, and maybe right here you're thinking, oh, I was so smart, and now it keeps going. Guys, the only reason I buy stocks is I expect them to go up 100%. That's why I'm buying them. So if it's not up 100%, I'm waiting. You know, it, It's just a matter of time. Like I'm, So even on this, what are we doing? Nothing. We've already taken profits. It already hit our target. Now what do we do? It could go to $50. So if it goes to $50 and you sell it at seven, what then, you know? And I see this is now some of you are going to be like, well, that I don't understand how that could happen. I'm telling you, this is a problem people have in, in the stock market. Um, now, is this probably going to do that? No, no. But look, look, if you learn the money flow, all of these questions are self-evident. So... We don't need trailing stops. We don't need any of that bullshit. Look, it went into a stage three, giving us plenty of time to get out before it went down. Even over here, it starts to go sideways, giving you plenty of time before it goes down. What do you think is going to happen over here? We're going to go sideways, giving us plenty of time to get out. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. And if it doesn't, oh well. And if you lose some of these gains, oh well. Uh, I buy lots of these. I have three 100 percenters this month. I mean, it's you, you, okay. Like maybe one pulls back 20, but who cares? Like it's the totality. So we're trading a portfolio of stocks. This is why you trade more than one stock. So when I have 20 or 30 of these going, I fully anticipate having some that go up 100%. Like that's why I'm buying them. And those are going to make up for all the losers. Why you guys? Why does everybody keep asking about the stocks that aren't going up? All right. If you're in the boot camp and you're asking about this, just. Go back to the beginning and watch the fucking videos because you didn't follow or catch something. Our stop is right here.
This is where our stop is. So what do we do right now? Nothing. You wait. This is still bullish. I mean, it's just barely turning. Just crossing. But our stop hasn't been hit. So we wait. Or buck it. Just sell it. Like, don't listen to me. Fuck it. You paid me to take the camp. I mean, why listen, right? Fuck it. Do your own thing, man. Fuck it. Don't even follow the process. I mean, it's just, you know, it's a stock going down. Fuck it. Like, just do whatever. So when this thing turns around and rips up higher, everybody be like, oh, man, I knew I should have bought more. That's what happens. So... You know, man. Um, you remember over here, DraftKings breaks out, then it falls back below the 20, and now it rips up 20%. Patience. Patience. So number one, stocks I'm getting asked about is RKT because it dropped below the 20 and then Polo. People want to sell the winners and sell the losers, man. Patience. 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 That's why we have stop losses. Um, some are going to get stopped out. Okay. Like, you know, we got 20 winners and one loser. That'd be okay with me. So, let's see. You guys done fucked up my. <clears throat> Look at Beyond Meat heading higher, man. We may not get a chance to add to that one. I mean, not at lower prices. I was hoping we would. ERX is headed higher. Groupon, we tag the target. Remember over here when Groupon fell below the 20 and it looked all bearish and I had to talk people into staying in the stock and tell them patience, patience. And then now we're 20, 40% higher. Um, Let's see. And by doing that, sometimes you're going to lose. Like you're going to lose. OPK is breaking out. This was another one. We bought the breakout and it started going the other way. And now we're headed up. You know, do we sell it because it's not immediately taking off and doing? No. Patience. Some of these take a little time, man. Take a little time. And then some of them don't. Some of them just fall, hit our stop, and we're out. That's the way it works. Polo's up 27% today. Woo! Tag the previous high. Um, yeah, I'm not selling anymore. I'm going to wait. We'll see what this does. I mean, that it, it means it's going to be volatile. Anything goes up 27% can come down 15 the next day and then up 12 and then down 8. Like, that's just the way that game's going to play. Um, let's see. Space having a hard time getting above it, so we should we take profits already. S, I'd be adding to S R N E if you don't have a full position. I'd be looking to add to this. This is stage two breakout, man. This is what you're looking for. Everything's lined up. So if you don't have a full position, or if you're not in that, I'd be looking to get in eleven dollars. Um, that's S R N E, right? So the stop is right around in here. Let's look at that one. It's a volatile stock, though, so you got to position size accordingly. I mean, you wouldn't trade this as big as as a as another company. Um. So that's our stop. 
right around in there, right? Started buying in here. There's the breakout. And the target is $11. Everything is headed up. That's it. Um, I like it. You know, it's a biotech, so keep that in mind, right? OPK is a biotech too. So those are penny stock biotechs, man. We got to keep that in mind. They're volatile stocks. Means you position. If you don't know what I'm saying there, you need to do some homework. Like you can't treat all stocks the same. Some are much more volatile than others, um, which will mess up your returns, you know. You want to kind of weight these things. So penny stocks, you know, I'm trading $100,000 as far as a trading account, and a penny stock may be $1,000 in my account. What is that? That's like 1%. Why? That way when it gets blasted, I'm not in a panic. Like it ain't no big deal. I'm trading a portfolio of stocks. So if one's going against me, I don't even notice. I didn't even notice RTK until other people started telling me about it. I fully expect it's going up. And I have stops to keep it if it goes down. So Twitter's a stage two breakout. That was one we we added. I forgot to mention. So you could keep you could add to this again today. Unless you're fully in, don't keep adding. If you're fully in, if you're fully in, do nothing. Just do nothing. Just wait. We got a fifty dollar target on this one. This is our stage one. Now this is a core trading stock for me. So um, I added. $50 target. I like to trade the same stocks. I'm not always looking for new stocks. Don't be obsessed constantly trying to find new stocks. Then you never learn the stocks you trade. Let's see. We already went through space. Oh, work. Yeah, space is creeping. I don't know if we're ever going to... I mean, hopefully we hit the RSI soon. Um, you should have already taken profits once. Now we're in work, $32 target on work. Uh, he said, anybody else take notes? I do. I take notes. Um, Exxon, woo, 4% today. Exxon's been a laggard, man. Exxon's been a real laggard in this whole uh, trade. If you go look at... Uh, Chevron, if you look at any of the other oil stocks, a lot of them are banging that 70 RSI. Exxon has not. Um, sometimes it's important to be aware of that. If the entire sector is hitting the hard, the hard RSI, and for whatever reason you have a stock in that sector that's not, you know, it eh, could be a problem. Could be a problem. This was obviously the laggard. I thought it would play catch-up. That's why I took it over Chevron. I normally trade Chevron, not Exxon. Chevron tends to move bigger. I was playing the fact that Exxon was going to play some catch-up, and it just didn't. It's moving, and that's why instead of adding to Exxon, you remember I added to ERX, which was our triple leveraged. Uh, I'm probably going to be adding to Zynga today. This is a brand-new position. Um, there's our box. We're coming out of the box. We're still above the five. Everything's rolling over. So I want to add to this. Got an 11. Uh, analysts think it's worth $11. My target is like up in here, 960 or so. Yeah, COP's hitting the RSI. A lot of oil stocks are hitting the high RSI, and, and Exxon is not. So that's something we need to keep in mind, maybe. Um, maybe it's going to play catch up, too. I'm not saying we abandon it or, or anything like that i'm just uh it's just something to point out and what maybe in the future if we end up getting any get into an oil trade that's just not the one you go with you go with conoco or you go with chevron they those three the reason i own all three in my buy and hold is they seem to play tag like every oil sell off one of them is the laggard and every oil rally one of them is the new leader so just over the years, I've accumulated shares in all three of those companies. Um, and then I, you know, I, I typically would trade Chevron with call options just because it's such a big mover. I think I was mentioning that the way I play options is on a stock that's just not going to move that big. Like I was talking about a possible options play on McDonald's. McDonald's is breaking out. 
Uh, Twitter could be a possible one too. If you don't want to tie up some money, you could pick up a couple call options here. Um, now, the way I do call options, I don't sell them. So if I buy them, that's it. I'm stuck in them. That's it. That's all. I'm all in on that trade. And my target would be like 230. And I would do the same with call options. I would buy, say, two or four with the idea of selling one at the target and hopefully letting one ride if it if it wants to ride. But I'm quick to get out of those too. So yeah, Gush has been pretty good. Gush and the BERX are about the same. So there's Gush, right? It's up, what, 12% today? EXR, no, ERX is up 9%. So Gush has got a little bit on it today. Uh, I'm not playing MFC. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, you could, man. Call options. I mean, I see what you're looking at. That's a huge support. Look at how, yeah, I mean, this is how. So if you look at this support level, right? Look at what we're seeing in, this is Netflix. Look, up, down, up, down, up, down. We're in a bull market. I mean, things, MACD, I mean, things are wanting to go up, it looks like. The shares cost you a lot of money. I mean, to buy 10 shares of Netflix is what, $4,000. So this would be one where I would, if I could, if I had the money, I'd rather buy one or two call options if I was swing trading it than, than tying up all that money into common shares, you know. Netflix calls are expensive, though. Let's see. You're in sun for buying home. Oh, yeah, nice. That's a nice trading stock too. You see the flow of the of the prices. See the breakout runs up, slows down. This is what you're looking to trade. These are nice moving stocks. Sun's a nice one. Yep. All systems go, man. Looks good, man. Everything looks good. You know, only trade we got not looking good right now is RKT. Um, I'm going to be patient. I mean, we might end up taking a little, a little loss on it. That's all right, man. That's all right. I don't think so, though. I think it's going higher. Doesn't look like it today, though. Um, but we're basically almost back. I mean, we're right by the breakout point so ain't that big a deal uh, ain't that big a deal I mean you could hold Netflix in your I mean if it's in your buy and hold you just hold it I mean there's nothing to do right uh, I don't have Netflix in a buy and hold if you have had it in a buy and hold over the years you've, you've been rewarded I mean it's gone up tremendously in my buy and hold, I don't keep more than two or three non-dividend paying stocks. So mine right now are Uber and Lyft. The other 44 positions all pay dividends. And I've been scaling back Uber and Lyft, um, looking for something new um, to put in my buy and hold. It's probably going to be Rocket Mortgage, RKT. So the only new ones that I've put into... Um, is Iron Mountain. IRM. I added Iron Mountain this year to my buy and hold, but I just took a position. It's not really on a, a discount. It's below the 200, I guess, but I'm going to wait and let that come in. I've been adding to FE. FE's on sale. Uh, FE. Um, the stock is going to double. It's going to double. Um, Yep, good spot to start a position in Zynga. Um, there was something else I was looking at. I think CHGG, someone mentioned this on the story. I've been looking into this. Looks pretty good, setting up. For small accounts, would you recommend more buy and hold or swings? That's the wrong question. 
You need to establish that when you set the account up, bro. Buy and hold and swinging is like two completely different things. You got to get your buckets right. In other words, everyone on planet Earth should have buy and hold account. That's where you're saving money for the rest of your life. So you got to get your buckets right. You should read my free ebook. And, you know, first thing, obviously, you want to do is get rid of debt. Now, nobody listens to me on that, but that's what you need to do. And then you set up the savings. Because if you ain't got savings, first problem, you and the wife, or you and you have, you're going to fucking clear out your trading account. So, and then you set up your buy and hold. You should just be adding money to it every month. I mean... And then trading would be completely different. So my answer would be both. Stop fucking taking days off and go get some money so you can have money in both. That's what you need to do. Because I bet if I looked, you take a lot of days off. Most of the guys I know work five days a week and then only work about four hours of the, each of those days when they're there. So, and then they wonder why they're broke. Because they don't work. Even when they're at work, they don't work. So they're not, they got too much downtime with no money coming in. I mean, you should have money coming in on Saturday, even if you ain't working. That's how you want to figure that shit out, man. Uh, I know it's going to sound crazy, but to my buy and hold, I buy every day, but I make money every day. So, like today, today, I'm just always buying. Today, I'm probably going to buy a little Gilead, one or two shares. I might buy one or two of FE. Like, I, I buy every day. Um, if, you know, if you have a job and you're paid once a month, then obviously you're going to do it like that, right? Um, but I'm in a constant state of... For me, yeah, like my man said, he trades at work. That's how you want to do it. For me, I've always done shit on the side. Always. So when I had a full, when I was working as a prison guard, I was mowing yards. When I was doing that, you know, I was mowing yards. I was doing this. I was doing affiliate programs. I'm working at the prison. I'm just always trying to create multiple ways of making money so that my wages could pay bills and my profits from the shit I was doing on the side, I could put into the market. I could buy real estate. And then as those things began to pay me money, I just reinvested them. And so to this day, only recently did I ever start using my rent money when rent money would come in on a house i'd push it to the stock market i just kept doing that month after month after month after month after i mean you know you see um you know i don't know man more work is usually the answer <laughs> he said he said <laughs> uh you know, <laughs> uh, crazy. It'll affect your brain, that's for sure. Uh, let's see. But, you know, if I was a young dude, I'd be learning to trade and I'd have a little buy and hold, even if it's small. Why do a small buy and hold? Repetition is the mother of skill. What you do now, you're going to do when you start getting money. I've always believed that. So, you know, when I started buying, you know, I, you know, what, what I did 20 years ago, like to get going was what I do today. I mean, you're, you're going to do the same thing. I mean, if you're consistently saving in your buy and hold, you just add zeros as you make more money. I mean, if you're not doing it now, when you start making more money, you won't do it. It's just been my experience. Yeah. You got to take profits in this homie. Did he just say he's buying this? Will it come back after pandemic? Who who the fuck knows, man? I know, man. I'm at it. I didn't get into OSTK. I, I kept watching it. I was trying to catch the exact bottom. You could buy this today. I'm just mad at myself. I should have bought yesterday and the day before. This was the day that I was going to buy, and then I didn't, and then now we've moved up. It's still technically a buy. Um, I'm not getting in it. I'm just mad at myself for missing it, and I'm very fucking disciplined. So because I messed it up, I'm not even going to let myself get in it. 
So it's already 10% past where I should have bought it. You could buy it here, though. This is totally fine. If you don't have a full position in SRNE, I would add to it. I wouldn't add to it if... Yeah, Mel called it out yesterday. And me and her were on the phone talking about it right here. And I said, I'm waiting for it to come above the five day. And that was the day. And then we got off the phone and I got sidetracked. And then I never got in it. And fuck, it goes up, man. So when that happens, I just, I missed it. I was being a dummy. Um, what? I have a whole bunch of these penny stocks. I'm going to share one with you right now. If it goes down, do not DM me and go, what are we doing with it? Because I'm not selling it into a sell-off, okay? And it's DS. DS. Go research it. Do your own due diligence. I will not sell this into sell-offs. I will wait and buy more on the stage one. So if it pulls back into here, I'm just going to buy more. I'm going to build this up to like, Five thousand dollars, and when it goes back to three dollars, I'm gonna buy something nice. Um, I've got several of these that I'm not selling them into sell-offs. I'm just accumulating shares. No, what is one of mine? But this is a God. It's been an ugly down move, huh? I started buying in here though. I mean, it's not a breakout. It's a bounce off the floor. I mean, I think you could get in. Um. This has been a brutal downtrend, though. I've tried to catch it in here. You see where it went extreme. Thought it was putting in a box, came down. Yeah, man, I think that DS, I really like the business model. I think the way they do golf is attractive. I think the way they have it segregated, I think it'll play out. And I don't know. I could be totally wrong. It was a $3 stock. If you go look, it was a $4 stock at one point. DS, pre-COVID, if we back it up. You know, this is where it was during COVID time. So I think we could get back over there. Um, we'll see. My target's only $3. APTX. APTX. Yeah, so stage two breakout. Look at this big ass. I call these kangaroo days. It tells you people can get irrational with the stock. I like to see those. You can't really use them for anything, but it just tells you that, that people do like to get irrational with this stock. Yeah, you're looking at it right around 380, right around in here, split the middle, and then around 425. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I actually might skip this one, dude, and take it up one higher because that's literally right on top of that one. So if I'm using target zones and they're right on top of each other, so I would use this zone and then I would use this one over here. I would skip this one. It's too close. I mean, you could, you could. If you had an enormous position, then I'd look to scale it out on all three, but you're gonna hit the RSI before that and the RSI is probably gonna hit, nah, it'll probably hit a lot earlier than that. It'll probably hit down in here, so I like it. Zynga over, yeah, I would take Zynga over Overstock. Yeah, Overstock's a breakout. You can get in it. I'm not in it. I feel like I missed it, but you could get in it here. I won't get in it here. I'm very precise. If I missed it, I missed it. Um, I'm selling some Discover DFS. This thing is fully valued right now. $77 is fair value. We got into this back in the 50s. This was a trade. Uh, I don't feel like there's much upside anymore. Uh, I'm not going to dump it all in one day, but I'm going to start taking this down to where it's just like 20 shares so that I can harvest that money to trade. Uh, we've rode it all the way to fair value. I mean, it's there's not much left. So, yeah, I'm not in it. You could jump into Overstock, though. I just, I want to build up Zynga. Uh, I'm probably going to do that today. Beyond Meat's leaving us. Shit, it's taking the 20 today. Fuck. 
was really hoping I had more time on this. I had it to Beyond Meat yesterday, but I'm not in a full position yet, and we're already off to the races. I hate these because of this long run. It's going to consolidate. It's going to pull back. This is going to be one that's going to go under the 20, above the 20, under the 20, as it makes this turn. I have no doubt. DraftKings did the same thing. So look at DraftKings. See how it just shot up and took that 20 real fast, and then it pulls back, and then now we're going red again. So look at this. Look at this. BIGC. Yep, 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 yep. I see what you're saying. I would definitely refer to that as back in the box. I mean, it was in a box, but it goes from this box up to one we had in here, right? I like it. That's the kind of movement you're looking for. That's positive movement, even though technically it's not a breakout, but it's definitely back up into this level, so... I like that. This is one of those odd stocks, though. Look how look how tight and little the bars are. And then all of a sudden, you have these explosive bars. I bet this is a low volume. No, it's got 1.6 million shares, so that ain't too low. I'm not familiar with the company. Big Commerce Holdings? Well, they think positive, I guess. Yeah, I like it. Good morning. So advanced day trades on Sundays. Uh, yeah, three dollars for DS. Salt. Let's look at salt. Yeah, that's already left the horse though, man. The horse has left the barn. You're creeping up on your first target there. Well, I'm in Shopify. Shopify is breaking out, by the way. That's an expensive stock. $1,100 target. Our man said BIGC is a shop alternative. So there we go. See how we're thinking there, right? So if you look at this stock, and you're like, fuck, I can't afford this. This is crazy. You could go find ones that are very similar. That's all That's all Polo was. This right here and Solo, these were plays on NIO and Tesla. I mean, just cheaper ways to play in that stock. Um, BLNK, you know, the battery maker. I mean, look at this. This explosive sub-100 and something. We have three of these going right now in our trade group. DPST, I mean, we start adding these. There's four of them. So we've had four or five 100% returns. Now, most people don't play them, right, because they let these little drops shake them out. See that little drop right there? They're out. That little drop, they're out, and they miss it. Now, why are they out? Because they're trying to add fucking their old way of trading where I don't do trailing stops. And people get where they're so afraid to lose that they can't win. Don't use trailing stops. Not if you're trading the money flow. It'll just mess you up. It will mess you up. Uh, HBP Hamilton. Oh, the only people that use trailing stops are retail traders. Let's see. AMC's been breaking out. I've traded Cinemark is the one that I did because I think they're less likely to go bankrupt. Um, I've been scaling out of this, though. So we got in this, you see the box? So this is another example, like RKT, where, like I was saying, sometimes you got to be patient. So we're trading this box here. There's the breakout. And look, it pulls back. That's what gets everyone in trouble. They're like, oh, and then they're out. It's going the wrong way. It's like, yep, you got to dance with the girl that brought you, though. And your stop is down here. And it hasn't been hit, so you honor it. You honor it. And then, look, it just explodes. We're up 80-something percent. Just being patient. Now, it might have went the other way and got me stopped out. Okay. 
So that's why I'm saying it. RKT could go the other way and get me stopped out. Okay. Or the next day it turns, turns, and rips up 100%. We don't know. So we got to have faith. <laughs> Isn't that what I said? Where there's no faith, there is no patience. And where there's no discipline, there can't be any intelligent action. Only through time can you attain these pivotal character traits. Patience and faith. If you trade the money flow or whatever strategy you use, you should just totally submit yourself to faith in that strategy. Like, don't doubt it. Don't question it. Don't even look at others. Like, the only, the only reason you would look at others is to maybe make yours better. That's it. Like, I still read trading books. And as I read them, you know what I do? I feel sorry for most of them when I'm reading. I'm like, you do this dumb shit? As I read their book, I'm like, this is dumb. And I get another trading book and I read it and I'm like, you do this? This is dumb. And I just, because none of them are better. <laughs> none of them are better. And so, uh, I do. I feel sorry for most traders. They have a lot of dumb shit in their head. And the truth is their kids could be better traders than them. Because their kids don't have all that dumb shit most adults have in their head their kid isn't sitting around worrying about news and presidency and interest rates and fiat currency crises and fucking like they're not worried about that shit they're just being kids see kids think they can be astronauts go to the moon be president around age 20 you decided to be practical give up on dreams and dreaming and want to be a rapper and stop rapping and yet it don't cost anything to rap. Like you can just drop music on, on fucking Spotify free. Nobody can stop you. You can just write books and put them on Amazon. Nobody can stop you. You can just put out product. Like there's no middleman anymore. Nobody can stop you. Nobody can stop you from trading. You could trade 10 shares, 100 shares, a million shares. You could trade smart even with less money. Like you could just decide, hey, I'm not going to be a dumbass. I'm going to trade like a professional hedge fund or a trader. And I'm just going to every day hold myself accountable to a strategy and a system, and I'm just going to live or die with it. Like, I'm going to settle it right now. And you could do that, and then trade from here on out, great. Or just continue dumbassery, which a lot of people do. And, you know, when I started writing books, I'm, I barely got through high school, if I was going to be honest with you. And I said, you know what, fuck it, I'm just going to write it how I talk. And then this Novax is looking good, huh? That's a good breakout, Novax. And then when I started doing real estate, I was like, I don't have a real estate license. I mean, a lot of guys who, they get real estate license to buy real estate. Why? What you should do is go get a job that pays money so you can buy real estate. Being a real estate agent doesn't help you buy real estate. Virtually every real estate I ever met doesn't even own real estate. So if being a real estate agent helped you buy real estate, why don't they all have real estate? They don't. And the reason is they don't make much money. So they can't buy real estate. <laughs> I'm telling you, very few people that work in the real estate business own real estate. And it's same in the stock market. Like, well, I like stocks. I want to be a stockbroker. That has nothing to do with trading stocks. You don't need a license to trade or any of that stuff, right? I mean, you get what I'm saying? Like, you don't need a license to do shit. You can just start doing it today. There's some penny stocks I'm watching. Look at this one. Fuck. I let this one get away from me. It just hasn't stopped. What is this? What are you, Frankie? Leonaire? Lionaire? Is that a play on Millionaire? Uh, you know, the one I get a lot is people want to be, uh, yeah, let's check Morningstar on that. Somebody will say, oh, I want to be a millionaire by 30. And they're 20. I'm like, you realize that means you got to come up with a hundred grand a year, right? Like you got to be saving a hundred thousand dollars a year to be a millionaire by 30 or invest in it. You uh, and yet you took Saturday off. 
How the fuck do you get $100,000 saved and you take days off? How would that even be possible? So they have ideas and shit that don't even match their, their life or their work ethic. Uh, Morningstar has it fairly valued. Uh, let's, let's go to tip ranks. This is a growth stock I'm imagining. So growth stocks, you really want to check in on tip ranks, to be honest. Tip ranks. DVAX isn't doing shit, man. It's just sitting in the box. I, DVAX is not doing anything, man. I don't know what to say on that stock. It just, yeah. So see, anytime you got a growth stock, Morningstar is going to value it basically what it's worth. Where tip ranks analysts are going to try to give you, uh, <laughs> I was just messing with you, bro. Uh, I do like the end of the name, though, frankly. That may be your name, shit. I don't know. Uh, $33. So on tip ranks. These are, look at this. These are all five-star analysts that like ping. So you're in good company there. Um. Sometimes that's not good, though. If if everybody agrees, that usually is not good. You don't want everybody agreeing, you know? Uh, my man says tree. So sometimes you don't want everybody agreeing with you. Oh. Ooh. Oh, lending tree. I think this is a Kathy Wood stock, too, huh? I think Kathy went to a Grant Cardone rally or something because she's put out some crazy price predictions. She said 15000 on Tesla. That has to be a misquote. And she said 50000 on Bitcoin. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Yeah, straight down, bro. Wait to buy on this. All, this is going down, 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 down. So wait on that, okay? That could explain why RKT is going down. If lending tree is going down, these are lenders. Oof. Lending tree. Dominion Energy. Only problem with this, man, it's going down while energy is going up. Mm mm mm. Yeah, it's at a support zone there. I would need a few more days, man. So many good oil stocks out there, though. Yeah, man. I, I, I'm starting to lose my respect for old Kathy. Her crazy-ass predictions. and Come on, dude. Let's see. I'm thinking she just got lucky and was in the right sector at the right time. Nokia, McDonald's, that's about it, man. Gold, look at AUY, man. Where's gold? Gold's in a straight downtrend. We can't play this. It just broke the box, so this could go a lot lower. Whew. This could be setting up for later, though. I wouldn't touch gold here with anybody's money. This is probably going lower. Wow, gold is breaking down. Look at that. And then look, big down. Everything's pointing down. Yep, gold is a no touch. No touch. No touch. Now, Kathy runs one of the, probably one of the most successful funds in the world right now, ARC funds. But it's mostly technology-driven you know, she's gotten some calls right. She was right about Tesla. Um, but she is talking her own book, you know. All those fund managers are talking their, their, you know, their own book. They're doing their own marketing, which is fine, you know. I'm, you're holding a bunch of AOI for a few trades from months ago. Never sold, right? I never sold. Um, no, I'm pretty sure we scaled it back. If you're... Uh, you shouldn't be holding a bunch. I don't like when people tell me those terms. You should be holding a position size that's equivalent to all the other position sizes. 
if you if you if you overweight position sizes and you get it wrong, you could fuck up your whole year. If you get it right, you could accelerate it, right? But I like to keep them all about the same. So I hope that's what you're doing. Don't get feelings and be like, oh, I feel this one. I'm going to get much larger than normal. Don't do that. The moment you do that, you're going to hurt yourself. Let's see. Yeah, Bitcoin's been going up. I give it that. Yeah, that is definitely a penny stock, dude. That's too small for me. 37 cents. Woo! You're in that one, Brittany? You're in uh, M-A-R-A? -A? Good trade. See, whenever you see these big moves like this, let's say you see that and then you didn't get in it, just wait. Let that shit come back and look, man. It did it just like just like we talk about, man. Look. Went up, sideways, starts coming back. Now what do you do? You stalk the breakout, you know? And that was where it started making its first move. Runs up. This would not have stopped me out. That would have stopped a lot of people out, but not me. Why? Because our stop our breakout point was over here. We're still above it. Um I don't know. Maybe it would have. If it did, you got to get back in up in here. Up 99. Man, that's beautiful. Fuck, dude, there's a lot, lot of these this month, right? Been generous this month. I think I've got like four of them. Crazy, huh? Crazy, crazy. Don't let that go to your head. Just from years and years of ex trading experience here, man, you start feeling lucky. Like, I'm pretty hot right now. You were like, fuck, I'm hot. I'm going, shit, I'm buying call options. Like, you start feeling that feeling like you are you can't lose. That's usually the top, man. <laughs> so, market has a way of humbling you. So, stick to your rules. Stick to your position sizes. Don't get greedy. Just trade. Just good trades. Execute good trades. This is why I didn't get into overstock. You could technically get into it today. I'm not getting into it because I messed it up. So I don't even want myself to make the money. I don't even deserve it for how fucking stupid I handled it. So I don't deserve to get in it. Um, but you guys could get in it for sure. I like to punish myself when I'm bad. Boxel. Good breakout. I'm in this one. Oh, I just lost it on... Let's get rid of those weirdos on Instagram. Just lost it on there. They only give you an hour. My main account, they'll give me up to like an hour and a half. I like Boxel. I'm in Boxel. It's been pretty good support level. Uh, I think 130 or so. I mean, we might have to throw, if it breaks that, I'd have to throw in the towel on this one. But you see the big move over here? I like, like these. That's what we saw with Marana, Marana M-A-R-A, Polo. Solo, these big moves, and then a sell-off, and then look, we're trying to get another one. So if you go look at, that's where like Polo came from. I seen these big moves, let it come down, and we caught this one, and we rode it, and then what? It came back, and we're doing it again. So don't chase these. If you catch them, just put it on your radar and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. And then uh, uh, I actually bought when this one popped without us. And it started coming back. We started buying in here. So there's another example. It broke. And then it pulled back under the 20. And I started buying. Because this is our stop loss. And it's obviously worked out. So let this go, man. How high are these going to go? I have no clue. But you should have already taken profits at this point. So just fuck it. I'd rather give up some money for the potential of making a bunch. What if this thing goes to $20? You know? I just assume lo I'd rather lose a dollar or two here. And look, it's it's been up there in the past. I'd rather I'd almost rather lose two dollars here for the shot at making another five or six. Just me. That's how it's just how you 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 really make your year, man, when you just let these winners run, dude. Um AMBO. And then we'll get off here. AMBO. Same thing. So you see this big-ass pop here, right? 
Now, what do we do with that? We wait and look at this big pop and then look at all this sideways action. So we're going to have time to get out of polo. And then it starts to come down. Now what? We're waiting for this little size. So my man's watching the same thing. And you could catch the same kind of crazy move. And when you get that big move, you know, it, it's going to tag that RSI, start, you know, take your profits then. And then if it wants to keep going, let it run. You know, don't try to get all out of them or you'll really miss big moves, man. Now, sometimes you're going to eat it for doing that. I promise you. That's why we trade 10, 20 stocks because, you know, we don't know which ones are going to be the ones that gift us, you know. It's always easy. You know, it's easy to Monday Monday morning quarterback, right? Oh, man, why'd they throw that? Because if they would have thrown a touchdown, they'd have been a genius. All right, man, hope that helps. Um, I like this. I'm going to go research this AMBO. I like this pattern, though, that we've been doing with this, these penny stocks with these explosive moves, pullbacks, and then explosive moves again have been working pretty well. So appreciate the tip on that one. You guys be good. Actually, you know what? Let's look on tip rank, see if that's on there real quick. AMBO. Not on there. Not on there. So there's no analysts that they're tracking that cover it. That makes it a tiny, tiny stock. Hmm. All right.